What's up everybody? My name's Rob Simmons. Welcome to my channel. I am back with Team Starkid series, Nightmare Time, Episode 3. Yesterday I reacted to the first story, Chains of the Car, which was romantic, hilarious, and kinda creepy. No, not kinda creepy. It was creepy. And I'm gonna continue that with reacting to the second story, The Witch in the Web. I have no idea what to expect, but knowing Team Starkid, I just know it's gonna be brilliant. So, let's get to it. Got a spider web right there. <laughs> Creepy forest. The witch in the web wants power. I think she played Lexi. Over you from the heights of her lonely. Oh, she's got a great voice. Oh, beautiful. Hope the volume's good. But a witch is a witch if you allow her to have power over you. The witch in the web is scary, but only looks like it's raining in that forest. Yeah, I think the woods are going to be the setting for this story. Who you are. In the web is ancient. That means I know her well. She certainly tests my patience from her black and white cell. I can throw away the keys now, but that's not me. Oh no. See, a witch is a witch for a reason. Until Bravo, Lexi. Bravo. I know it's not the actress's name, but you know what I mean. The door to Hannah Foster's room burst open, and her mother, Pamela, comes storming. Oh, wait, maybe it's not Lexi. Manners, you got any idea what time it is? Hannah stops strumming and looks up from her ukulele. Nightmare time. It's 3 a.m. I got a date bright and early with my future husband, so shut up. Pamela rips the instrument from Hannah's hand. No! Oh, don't break it, don't break Dad it, please don't break it. Pamela hobbles for the doorway on a broken foot, her heavy cast dragging beneath her. Hannah stops her, pleading. Please, I have to keep singing or I'll forget the songs. Mm. Pamela slams the door behind her. Defenseless and alone, Hannah lays back on her beat-up old mattress, holds the blanket over her head, and waits for the nightmares to come. The next morning, Pamela plants herself in front of the TV as her favorite show begins. This is Morning Cup of News with Dan. Yep, and I knew it was going to be a news report. I'm gonna marry you one of these days, you beautiful bastard. Just wait until you get a load of me. Hey, Nanners, bring them beers in from the icebox, huh? Hannah stands in the kitchen nook of her mother's rundown little home, 
exhausted from another restless night. She grabs a half-drank six-pack from the fridge. On the TV, Dan Reynolds... Yeah, that's Lexi on the top in the third spot. Good morning, Hatchetfield. This is Dan Reynolds. And I'm Donna Daggett. As the leaves fall and the jack-o'-lanterns light up, we know around these parts that can only mean one thing. Halloween. It's a few short months until the Hatchetfield Honey Festival. <laughs> that's amazing, Donna. Mm -hmm. You're amazing, Dan. <laughs> hey. Hey, Nanners, you... Uh, I want to be alone with my man. Go... Go play outside. With what? I don't know. Go find some dog turds or something. Here. Ew. She tosses Hannah a beer from the six-pack. Hannah inspects it, shrugs, and heads outside. Pamela turns back to the TV, melts into the recliner. Outside, Hannah sits on the metal steps to her front door. She stares out into the hatchet field of Witchwood, the forest that's bordered her home all her life. Lately, however, something has changed. Almost as if the Witchwood itself has woken up and it's calling to her. She cracks open the beer and takes a swig. <sighs> oh. Yeah. Tastes gross to kids. Hannah looks up to a tree. She nods to it awkwardly, like a wallflower at a school dance. Aww. So, what's your name? That's pretty. Huh? It can't hold who? Hannah leans closer to the tree, trying to hear what it's saying. But its voice is drowned out by vroom. Whoa. Hannah looks to find an old station wagon pulling up beside her trailer. From it emerges Douglas Keene, a.k.a. Duke, the social worker assigned to assist the foster family. He sees the girl talking to a tree. Hannah? Hiya, Duke. Hey, darling. Just came to check. What you got there? The uh oh, the he's gonna see the beer. Knowing she could get in trouble, she decides to play dumb and shrugs. <sighs> Where did you get that? From her mother. Is she inside? Mm -hmm, that's right, get the mother in trouble. The foster well, mother. Did she tell you to say that? Uh-huh. <sighs> Let's go have a word with her. Come on, get her in Inside, trouble. Pamela is also playing dumb. Oh, thank you so much, Mr. Keene. I cannot believe Hannah would just steal one of my beers. Oh, no. Lady, if you're going to drink someone's beers, you've got to throw them a few bucks. Huh? Uh, it just seems to be a pattern here. Miss Foster, the first Lex gets caught with your pills, and now Hannah with your alcohol. I know, Duke. They gotta make it so hard to be a single mother, huh? Only had a man around to help me. He, oh. she's trying to flirt with him. Uh, all right, Pamela. Uh, <clears throat> you're not gonna be holding on to Hannah at all if this keeps up. You wanna lose her, like you lost Lex? Don't get my hopes up, dude. Oh my gosh! This is not a joke, Pamela. I found Hannah talking to a tree. She needs to be mentally engaged with something. Where is your ukulele? What? The instrument you took from her. Me? Take from the old Wait a minute, if she's Lex's yeah, mother, she is this after the mall blew up? Established that she is alive where Lex was killed? So. Pamela retrieves the ukulele from the cupboard. I was just cleaning it for her. Yeah, right. Here you go, Nanners. You look telltale. Hannah sees the instrument. A look of concern washes over her when she realizes. That's not mine. Yes, it is. It's wrong. No, it ain't. Just give Hannah her ukulele back. You think I got money for two of these? This thing keeps me up all night. She won't stop just playing. How am I supposed to get my beauty sleep? 
Don't play past nine, Hannah. With the instrument returned, Duke heads for the door. Oh, that's a relief. And Hannah explains. It's the wrong color. Mine's white. What? In her hands, Hannah holds a black ukulele. Duke turns to her mother, but Pamela shrugs. She couldn't care less what color the thing is. Duke turns back to Hannah as her eyes go wide. So it's is black in Pamela it, the witch? In nightmare time. Is this nightmare time too? Wait, wait, is this a fourth wall break here? Elsewhere in Hatchetfield, an aerobics VHS tape from the 1980s plays on a vintage television set. On screen, the coach instructs. All right, girls, pick up those knees. <laughs> That's it. So it's a workout tape. Wall phone rings. A mysterious woman stops her workout, pauses the tape, and throws a towel over her shoulders. Miss Holloway picks up the receiver and puts it to her ear. Hiya, Duke. Hey, darling. I see you've taken your first tenuous steps into the 21st century. <laughs> How's that? Well, you knew it was me. Finally caved in and got yourself a caller ID, Miss Retro. <laughs> <laughs> That's some fancy detective work. So, um, you busy tonight? Douglas Keene, are you asking me out? It's a school night. Yeah, and I gotta wash my hair, but um, this isn't about us. There's a 14-year-old girl named Hannah Foster. Uh, I think she might be in need of your expertise. Later, two cars pull up to the Foster residence. The old station wagon and a 1987 Pontiac Firebird. Duke's hand raps on the front door, and Pamela answers. Knock, Hello knock. again, Pamela. This is Miss Holloway. Miss Holloway smiles politely, turning up the collar on her baggy jean jacket. Uh, she's the specialist I told you about. What did I say? Hannah don't need no specialist. I'm a good mother. Uh, I never yeah, taken right. my daughter to a doctor, so... Unless you got a court order, I'm not letting this shrinky dink into my home to poke around Hannah's head. Duke sighs, raises his brows, and turns to Miss Holloway. You're up. Miss Holloway leans closer to the screen door that stands between her and Pamela. She places a hand on the doorframe and starts tapping as she speaks, rhythmically, hypnotically. Miss Foster, Pamela was it? You don't know me. No, I don't. But I do know you haven't been sleeping very well. Neither is Hannah. Her voice is melodic. It echoes in Pamela's ears. Up at all hours of the night? Heck, must be a battle just to keep your eyes open right now. I think... You want to sleep, don't you, Pamela? She's echoing because she's getting into Pamela's head. With Hannah sleeping well, you can rest too. Deeply. Yep, peacefully. she's getting sleepy. Isn't that what you want? Uh-huh. Maybe she's Why not a psychiatrist. So I can help Hannah. Okay. As if in a trance, Pamela opens the screen door, letting Maybe Duke she's the, the witch. Now go sleep on the couch. She hypnotized her. Pamela sleep I knew walks it. to a sunken old sofa and flops face first into the cushions. She's already <laughs> snoring. Duke watches in awe. <laughs> he can't explain the things Miss Holloway can do, so he won't even try. He just shakes his head and smiles. I think I'm in love with you. You know that? <laughs> Wouldn't blame you. <laughs> Later. Hannah sits on her dilapidated mattress, hugging her knees. Miss Holloway is on the floor beside her. She takes in the tiny room, the room Hannah once shared with her older sister. Electric lights hang from the ceiling. There's a map of California pin pinned to the wall. Miss Holloway smiles at the young girl. Hello, Hannah. I'm Miss Holloway. I'm a friend of Duke's. 
I work with children. I help them with problems that adults might not understand or believe. She sees the black ukulele propped in the corner. She picks it up and addresses it fondly. <laughs> so Duke tells me that your sister gave you this? I used to play music too, a long time ago. It's not mine. She switched them. Your mother? No. Miss Holloway sets the instrument. And who? Hannah, can you tell me about Nightmare Time? When did it start? When Webby went away. Webby? At the sound of the name, Miss Holloway freezes. Hannah, is Webby a spider? Sometimes. Sometimes she's a girl. She used to sing to me. I have to play her songs every night or I'll forget them. Aww. Forget Webby. She wants to get rid of Webby. Then she can get me. Who? The witch. What witch? I stand corrected. The the so the psychiatrist is not the witch. He hands Miss Holloway a cup of coffee. They lean on the remnants of an old wooden fence and breathe the crisp autumn air. As the sun softly sets, Duke explains. Alex and her boyfriend got picked up selling her mother's painkillers. Ethan got two years. Lex got five. That wasn't her first offense. Ah. Uh. And that was three months ago. Three months. So it's not sequel to Back Friday. I guess each story what? is its own universe. When the nightmare started. Well, Hannah and her sister, they were close. <laughs> Lex was more of a mother to her than that charming woman. In fact, Lex told me that it was her mother's idea to sell the pills. Lex later denied it in court. I think she was afraid of leaving Hannah with no one. So maybe it's some kind of trauma that's keeping the kid up at night. Mm -hmm. An imaginary friend? Well, I don't think so. I don't think this is like the others. I think Hannah might be in some very bad trouble. Well, can you help her? I'm gonna try. That night, Miss Holloway strikes a match and lights a large candle. The flame illuminates Hannah's darkened room. So Hannah, you say there's a witch in nightmare time. She's the one that wants to get you? Uh-huh. Well, if you can promise to keep a secret, I'll tell you something. I'm a witch too. Oh, she is a witch, witch then. Most of the time. <laughs> I stand corrected again. Tell me, Hannah. Nightmare time. Have you ever seen this? From inside her bag, Miss Holloway retrieves a small something wrapped in a tattered shawl. Hannah recoils as the layers of fabric are peeled back to reveal a book bound in black. Oh boy. Hannah has seen this in her dreams and she knows to fear it. Why do you have that? It's okay. I keep it safe. It's called the black book. It's bad. Yeah, she's seen it before. Do you know who the lords in black are, Hannah? They're Webby's brothers. They have followers. I think one of them is in your mind. But we're gonna get her out. Miss Holloway begins to open the black book. Hannah winces. No! There's nothing good in there! Hannah, sometimes things aren't black and white. Sometimes we have to use something bad to do something good. 
It all has a price. I know. I can pay it. Let's just say I have very good credit. Hannah, you have to go into nightmare time. No. But don't worry. I'm going with you. Really? As the candle burns, a sweet mist fills the room. The electric lights twinkle. Hannah lays back in her bed and closes her eyes. Miss Holloway flips through the thick old pages of the black book, settling on one displaying the spell she needs. She takes a deep breath and taps softly on the book's cover as she guides Hannah. Relax. Focus on the sound of my voice. Drift down. Deep down. Good. Very good. Now, fast asleep, Hannah stands in an endless black void. So nightmare time is like Still this dreaming. dream world. Her eyes open when she feels someone take her hand gently. It's Miss Holloway, smiling at her. See? I told you I'd be with you. Now, I know nightmare time can be scary. But you have to remember, Hannah, this is your mind. No matter what anyone here tries to tell you, you are in control. She sets the stage. Do you understand? Uh-huh. All the power here comes from you. And you are very powerful, Hannah. Okay? Okay. Now where's the witch? That way. Hannah points. They're suddenly at the edge of a vast forest, but not one of trees. Instead, hundreds upon hundreds of people jut up from the ground, roots extending from their legs into the earth like twisted wooden veins. A heavy fog seeps in. Hannah and Miss Holloway set off into the mist toward the witch. As they pass the statuesque figures in this human forest, some of them turn to Hannah, trying to warn her. Stay away, Hannah. Oh. We oh. can't hold her anymore. Oh, that's creepy. Who are they? Tree people. The men with hatchets put them here. They all had a touch of the gift. Some of them didn't want to be planted, but the hatchet men did it anyway. Their roots made a web. The witch was stuck. Oh. But now she's not. Stay out, Hannah. She'll get you. So that's why Hannah, the theme song was set in the forest. Don't stop. They press on. Deeper into this strange wood. Soon Miss Holloway begins to notice the attire of the tree people they're passing has become dated. They reach one girl dressed in an oversized vintage tee, bearing the logo of some 80s pop star the whole world's forgotten. So these people have this been girl, here for a long time. Her clothes are old. They get older the deeper you are. Casey was planted in 1986. The tree girl, Casey, turns to Miss Holloway in a ghost-like daze. Can I have your autograph? We have to go back further. Much further. Hannah and Miss Holloway pass people dressed in clothes from the 70s, 60s, 50s. The decades roll by until they find individuals who look like they're from the 1800s. Hannah stops. This is as far as I've come. I don't know their names. They're so old they forget how to tell me. We're near the center. The witch is close. This is creepy. Let's keep going. Miss Holloway holds Hannah's hand tightly as they step beyond an invisible threshold. I'm trying to visualize this in my head and I'm shaking. 
while doing so. fall through the fog and crunch unseen leaves. Before them, in the distance, is a ramshackle rotting hut. The witch's hut. Oh boy. Billows from the from a crooked chimney. All around the tree people spring to violent life, pointing and screeching. Okay, and that gave me goosebumps. I I can't do this. Yes. Yes, you can. Don't let go. Whoa. The tree people's jaws unhinge and their mouths open to an unnatural size. Their insides glow as they let loose an ear-piercing cat-like wail. Wind howls. Miss Holloway's grip on Hannah starts to give. Don't lose me. Hannah. Miss Holloway. Miss Holloway. Oh no, they lost each other. This is way creepier than the last story. Miss Holloway's fingers. She's pushed to the ground by a gust of cold air. She tumbles through briars, thickets of dry brush, till she lands with a thump on the floorboards of an old wooden courthouse. You. Hannah looks up to find a village worth of angry townsfolk leering over her. The citizens of Hagfield, circa 1824. Two men grab her arms and yank her feet. No! Let me go! Whoa. She's actually the bench of a decrepit old judge. He points to her with a spindly spotted finger. Willa Bella Muckwab, you vile creature. You who hath danced with demons. You who hath penned the abominable tome with the blood of our children. You have been found guilty of the crime of witchcraft. For it, you shall hang from the neck until you are dead. No, please! The villagers pounce on him. She's suddenly in a clearing, the heart of what will one day become the Witchwood Forest. She's staring at a rickety platform. A noose hangs down from a beam up above. The townsfolk take hold of her and push Hannah toward the gallop. <laughs> oh no. Kill her! Hey. Oh no, 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 no. Hannah's thrown onto the scaffold. The back of the crowd gathers. Don't kill her. Don't kill her. Hannah can make out her jean jacket and beat up sleeves. It's Miss Holloway calling. <gasps> An executioner pulls a rope around Hannah's neck as the judge cries out. Oh my god. Never shall she plague this land again. This land we paid for with blood. Her immortal soul shall rot here. And the roots of the wood we plant shall ensnare her. Furthermore, caught and paid for with our sacrifice. Miss Holloway desperately claws her way through the mob. Hannah, you have to take control. You're giving them the power. With it, they can kill you. But the illusion is too strong. The Witch in the Web has Hannah caught in the memory of her own death. The Executioner takes hold of the lever, ready to release the trap door beneath Hannah's feet. The innocent must suffer. She's put you in her place. The guilty must be punished. You are not the witch. You must taste blood to be a man. At the judge's signal, the I'm sorry to put the pieces pulled. together now. Hannah falls away. <laughs> Miss Holloway hurls herself at Hannah, catching the girl midair. The two of them go crashing through the confines of Hannah's mind. Neon lights flash, bulbs burst, then quiet. <laughs> Miss Whoa. Holloway and Hannah land on a dusty, dirty carpet in a large, dark room. They sit, brushing themselves off. Wait, did they wake up back in Hannah's room? Are you or are they right? still in the nightmare world? I got scared. I got scared watching no. that. Don't, next time. <sighs> Hannah, I know you're afraid of the witch. She shows you things. Terrible things. Yeah, so the witch she was a real person. You. She wants to hide and, and make a big loud noise. 
I'm guessing she was executed during the Salem witch what trials, if I had to take a wild guess. Because she's afraid of you. Whoa. She's dead. You're alive. You're much more powerful than she is. She knows that. She wants that power. Now there is a twist I didn't Don't see coming. Sure. Remember that when we go back. I don't want to go back. We have to. It's not safe. All right, end of part one. I had to get you out of there, Hannah. I did the only thing I could. I put you in my mind. Whoa. This I thought they woke up in her me. bedroom. Hannah looks around. She and Miss Holloway stand in the aisle of a crumbling, abandoned theater. The Starlight Theater. From the shadows, a writhing, withered husk slithers into view. Be careful. Miss Holloway touches Hannah's shoulder, cautioning her not to get too close. This thing is a mass of flesh. Three emaciated forms welded together. Yikes. Dragging themselves along with a with six bony arms. Three Oh, that's down. disturbing. What are they? Three girls I couldn't save. Oh no. Like Wait. Could no. Hannah end up being the fourth girl? Nothing like you. I really hope it's not. Points down the aisle toward the empty stage. Beyond it is a door with a neon exit sign glowing above. Look, there's the exit. We need you to go through it to get back to your mind. Hold my hand. There are bad things here. Hannah takes Miss Holloway's hand and follows Almost her forgot something. the long aisle. Around them is decay and debris and moonlight shining through holes in the roof. The rows of ripped up velvet seats seem to stretch off into nothing. From the nothing, Hannah can hear voices calling to her. Anna. Oh no. They want her back. You're here, my little star. But shaking banana. Banana split. Banana pudding. There's a thousand ways to eat a banana. <laughs> Hannah tightens her grip on Miss Holloway's arm. This is your nightmare time. Why are they calling to me? Because I don't listen to them. Hannah tries to ignore the voices as well, until she hears one that stops her dead in her tracks and makes her blood run cold. We just keep running into each other, don't we, Hannah? Oh my gosh. She whirls around. Suddenly, Miss Holloway is gone. And Hannah stands alone in the center of the barren stage. Wiggly. Miss Holloway. Miss Holloway. It's then that Hannah realizes she's not alone. Carved into the stage beneath her is a strange symbol. Beside it, pinned to the floor by a black blade, is a rotting skeleton. Oh no. Away, only to find she can't cross the boundary of the etching below. It begins to glow around her. Green light streams up through the floorboards of the stage. It hits the skeleton, and the dead thing begins to wriggle and twist. It reaches Whoa. a wide arm to its ribcage and wrenches the black blade free from its resting place. The heap of bones rises to its feet. Life returns to the corpse in a flash of neon green. Holy crap. What stands before Hannah is a man. Greasy black hair, a gnarled smile, and an all denim wardrobe. How you doing there, Hannah? Now it's not so scary. Who are you? How do I know you? Oh, don't you worry about that. Hunger? From behind his back, the man produces a sour green apple. He tosses it to Hannah. It reaches her. When it reaches her, it's rotten, crawling with maggots. Ew. She drops it in horror. Splat. Ew. She yeah, exactly. And the man is now inches away. He grabs her arm. 
You're one slippery little banana peel. Well, you know that. But I got you now. It's a shame. No much power in that noggin going right to waste. In his other hand, he holds the black blade. He raises it high above Hannah's head. Let's crack it open and see what's inside. He brings the blade down, but Hannah is gone. He whirls around to find her safely clutching the arm of Miss Holloway. Ah, oh, what a relief. You can't hurt her. You're dead. Am I? Am I, though? Well, I should know. I killed you. Whoa. Well, only about half the time. The other half, I mopped the floor with that head of you. I ate your heart. And I took your jacket. Fits me better anyway. He pops the collar on Miss Holloway's jean jacket, which has now jumped to his body, completing his ensemble. What are you talking about? Well, ask the kid. She knows. You thought you stopped it, but it shattered when she came. Didn't it, Hannah? He sees it all. Every possibility. That's why her mind is so vast. So powerful. That kid <laughs> is a battery. No, she's a nuclear power plant. <laughs> she brought me back with nothing more than a little toot. <laughs> You're a nightmare. That's all. Now with her around, oh, that one's a live wire. Woo! Two hundred years the ghost of that old witch couldn't do much more than spook a few trick-or-treaters on Halloween. Now she is a very busy woman, setting up shop in Hannah's mind. Pretty soon Hannah's body will be her permanent residence. Now that sounds like fun. Slipping into someone else's skin. Maybe I should give it a try. Back in the oh boy. Room, Pamela Foster's eyes burst open. Like a puppet on a string, she's lifted from the old sunken sofa and silently bobs into the trailer's kitchen nook. Duke sits watch outside Hannah's room, but he fails to notice Pamela sneaking up behind him. Wham! She knocks him out cold with an iron frying pan. In Miss Holloway's nightmare theater, the denim-clad man advances on her and Hannah. Think about it. A real wish. <laughs> no offense, Miss Holloway. The first disciple of Wagag Yurath, author of the Black Book itself, paired with the most powerful psychic mind in the history of reality. Well, that's a match made in... Well, I don't want to say it. Yeah. Hannah, we're out of time. We gotta get to the exit. They're not gonna let me go with you. Go now, Hannah, go! <laughs> Miss Holloway points Hannah in the direction of the backstage door with the exit sign up above. The girl runs for it, leaving Miss Holloway to swear off. Come on, off Hannah, her run. Old enemy. Well, well. Together again. He plays a great villain. <laughs> <laughs> Back off. I got a knife. You mean this knife? In her hand, she now holds Oh. Plot twist. Miss Holloway tightens her grip on the blade's hilt, ready to defend herself. But the denim clad man makes no move. You come back just to talk? <laughs> Miss Holloway, you know me. You think I'm gonna fight you head on? Your turf? I don't wanna get my ass kicked in front of these gorgeous girls, hey ladies? <laughs> Wait, the girls who are melded together? The six armed three men yep, I knew it. of undead tissue crawls onto the stage like an enormous screaming insect. Miss Holloway stays focused on her opponent. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm gonna cheat. Hey! Got a frog in the Suddenly, Miss Holloway can't breathe. Back in Hannah's room, Pamela Foster looms over the sleeping Miss Holloway, strangling her neck. 
In the nightmare theater, Miss Holloway chokes and struggles in vain, gasping for air. She oh boy. the black blade and falls to her knees. The denim-clad man pounces. In an instant, his hands are wrapped around Miss Holloway's throat, too. Just as Hannah is about to reach the exit, she turns back. Miss Holloway! The man looks to the three-mouthed monster. What are you waiting for? Go get her! The thing lunges forward and bolts for Hannah. Oh, no. As it reaches her, Hannah closes her eyes and screams. No! From the girl, a pulse of psychic energy explodes. The six-armed thing is tossed into the darkness what? like it's nothing. Wait, wait, wait. Did that come from Hannah? Blazes forward, splintering the stage floor, cracking the entire theater in two. The man in denim sees the blast headed his way. Uh huh? Boom! He's thrown from Miss Holloway. In the waking world, a psychic eruption flings Pamela across Hannah's room. Smack! She cracks a mirror that hangs on the wall. Discharged from her own nightmare by Hannah's immense power, Miss Holloway wakes to find Pamela out cold on the floor. Duke stumbles into the room, holding a nasty bump on his aching head. Ouch. Uh, are you all right? Miss Holloway nods. Uh, what about Hannah? It's up to her now. Oh she's no, she's alone in there. Or the witch will. How will we know? Well, the witch kills us. That'll be a big hint. Uh, yeah. Unable to get back to Hannah's mind, Miss Holloway kneels next to the sleeping girl and holds her hand. Hannah finds herself lying in bed. Sunlight pours in through the tiny window. Her eyes flutter open. It's morning. The room is clean and tidy. Does she Somehow, actually wake up or is this part of the nightmare? She looks because around. I've had dreams There's like that as well. Holloway or Duke or even her mother. I'm sorry about the noises. My she neighbors have landscapers out she's there right now. Think. Then the door opens and a smiling face peeks in. Hi, Hannah. Lex! Lexi! Hannah's sister, Lex, steps into the room with outstretched arms. Hannah runs to her. They embrace. I'm back. <laughs> Let me go. I took mom instead. It's over. Now wait, 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 wait a minute. I think this is part of the nightmare. Lex swings her backpack from That's a floor. trap. The pins on the front sparkle in the sunshine. Look at all the stuff I brought you. Lex unzips the bag and pulls out a veritable treasure trove of wonderful things. Piling what them all things? around, filling the room. Toys, games, <laughs> what's this? A puppy! Aww. <laughs> Lex hands a happy little dog to him. He looks her face and wags his tail. She giggles, sets him down, and looks around. Where's my... Didn't you give me something else? What? This isn't enough for you? The ukulele. I used to play it. It helped me remember... a friend. What was her name? You want some friends? Well, check out these guys! I got a whole set! Lex removes five dolls from her bed. One with a mask-like face. Oh uh, boy. It's a trap. I know it's a trap a now. One with a huge eye. A yellow one. With a head like a goat. <laughs> a pink one. With a mouth for a face. And <laughs> a green one. With fur and tentacles. Mm-hmm. Hannah sees them. That's the most sinister one. Those are her brothers. They're bad. Who told you that? That nasty little spider you think is your friend? Uh-huh. Well, we've already established she's a lying little turd. Outside, the sunlight fades. Lex leans over the dolls, coveting them, worshipping them. 
The world is theirs, Hannah. All the worlds are theirs. But right here, these can be ours. All you gotta do is agree to stay here, okay? Deep down in drowsy town. Hannah backs away as Lex's voice begins to shift and crack. I'm not a monster, like they all said. I think she is. I knew it. Not Lex lurches forward. Her back bulges up into a spiny. Oh no. Scrapes the ceiling. The electric lights above the bed pop one by one. Dark muck drips down the walls as they crack and crumble. The not Lex grabs its face and pulls. Its skin mask peels away. Oh, the that's disgusting. Its joyless grin. Hannah stands. Is the witch in nightmare time. Face to face with Willabella Mukwa, the witch in the web. Oh I no. You could have had your sister. Now you will have my husband. The witch inches closer, dripping and stinking. All around, Hannah's room slowly chips away, leaving the stone walls of the witch's hut. The hag reaches out an enormous clawed hand and strokes Hannah's cheek. Oh no. Come on, Hannah, you have to escape. Holy crap. Wow. The grotesque rotting woman, and something on the crooked mantle catches her eye. It glimmers in the firelight. Hannah's ukulele, polished and pristine. Almost oh, maybe that's the way out. For an instant, Hannah's fear is forgotten when she remembers what the instrument means to her. Her love for her sister. Her connection to a friend whose name she can almost remember. Seeing it makes Hannah feel powerful. Then she realizes, in nightmare time, a world of dreams and symbols, the ukulele is her power. <sighs> that's... that's why you took it! Hannah pushes past the witch and runs for the fireplace. The witch lunges after her. Her spiny hunched back scrapes the stone wall, spent sending a spray of sparks through the hut. Her talons lash. Hannah dives for the mantle. She got it! Yes! You took it from me! And you hid it in nightmare time! But it's mine, not yours! I have the power! She grabs the ukulele and lifts it high above her head. She radiates psychic energy. I have the power. You got this, Hannah. Which pounces but can't stop Hannah from swinging the ukulele with all her might. It hits the stone wall and snaps. The witch's hut explodes. And My heart is pounding right now. Boulders, bricks, and debris fly off in every direction. Willabella howls as her stronghold in Hannah's mind crumbles away, falling off into nothing. Is that it? Soon, all that's left is Hannah, the witch, and a woman with long white hair. Webby! There she is. Hannah's power fully restored. She looks like an angel. So is her connection to Webby. The cosmic being smiles at Hannah, then turns to the witch. Hello, little Bella. You've been hanging around my brothers. My lord. I feel a lot of tension leaving my body right now. Close your eyes, Hannah. Hannah covers her eyes. Webby bends down over the witch, who cowers in fear. You were gonna hurt my friend. I'm going to destroy you now. A ghost, no more. Just be gone. Webby puts a finger to the witch's forehead, <sighs> and it starts to flake away. <laughs> The witch screams. I think she's disintegrating. Yep. 
After 200 years, Villabella Muckwab is gone for good. Sad. <sighs> Sigh of relief. Levy walks to him. Oh my gosh. And lightly touches her shoulder. But why do I have a feeling that there's going to be another twist in the next few minutes? Because we have like five minutes left. She's back in her room. Her real room. Duke and Miss Holloway look at her. They look to her. Oh, thank yeah. God. She's safe now. I found her. Webby's back. Nightmare time is over. Duke sets Pamela back on the sofa. She's still out for the count. <clears throat> I have a hunch Pamela's gonna wake up feeling very guilty. She's gonna confess something that's been weighing on her conscience. She might go away for a while. But and rightfully what, so. Pamela, what if somehow Lex came home? <laughs> really? Ethan too? I'll see what I can do. Oh my gosh. Outside, the sun is rising. With her work here done, Miss Holloway heads for her 1987 Pontiac Firebird. Before she goes, she turns back to Hannah. You know, I help a lot of kids, and I always give them something when I go. A reminder of the warriors they become. Here. From her bag, she produces a navy blue Hatchetfield Nighthawks baseball cap. Oh, that's she great. It to hand. It's imbued with the power of Grayskull. As long as it's on your head, nothing can harm you. Hannah takes the hat, pulls it on, and spins it backwards. Miss Holloway smiles. There it is. And waves to Duke. She gets into her car and revs the engine. Duke puts a hand on Hannah's shoulder, and the two watch Miss Holloway drive off through the witch world. <sighs> Miss Holloway, you're a hero. Wait, is that it? Yeah, that's it. Oh my gosh. Wait. Yep, we got a closing theme song now. Yeah, this is Chris for both the stories, Jane's a car and Witch in the Web. Got a great voice, all right. I'm gonna keep it to credits because I want to make sure I don't miss anything. I think those creatures are still stuck in nightmare time. But who can forget Wiggly?
Hope you're all dancing with me. Actually, this is a great way for me to unwind and uh, sort of de-stress after that one story because it was really well done, but it was also really suspenseful and stressful. Wow. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's it. Oh my gosh. <clears throat> I did forget to mention that this is the last story in season one of Nightmare Time. And boy, did they go out with a bang. This one was really well written and everybody, and I mean everybody, did a phenomenal job with their singing and acting. I mean, this group is supremely talented. I mean, there have been a few moments where they gave me goosebumps. I mean, oh, it's still going through my head. Oh my gosh. I guess, especially during the screams and the suspenseful parts, they really got me there. And I felt a whole range of emotions watching that, being scared in suspense and also being happy and empowered that Hannah was finally able to escape. The only small thing that I wish was different about the, the story especially towards the end is that I wish we actually got to saw Hannah and Lex reunite in the real world. That would have been the cherry on top for me. And I said this about the stupid Christmas show within the show, that it could potentially be a spinoff from Team Star Kid. And I'm going to say this about Miss Holloway. She definitely has the potential to have her own series helping other little kids like Hannah escape their nightmares. <sighs> yeah. And like I said, Team Star Kid is hilarious and brilliant, and this is no exception. And I know this was filmed during the pandemic, and I'm really glad they didn't let the pandemic stop them from entertaining us. And I'm definitely going to continue with Nightmare Time. I can't decide whether I'm going to do Nightmare Two, Ni Nightmare Time Two next, or Nuri Prudes Must Die. I'm leaning towards Nightmare Time Two. But anyway, as always, let me know in the comments what you think. Thank you very much for watching.